we're going to be seeing too much. No, we're going to pass the mic if, 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 we, if we can't be heard. Um, so could you could you tell me, can, can you hear me in the back of the room okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so that's, that's all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass you the microphone for now. Uh, so when you read the Whatever's resolutions. Yeah, and then if, uh, if one of the council members is speaking, if you don't mind, if you can't hear, just raise your hand for me and then we'll know that uh, that we need to hand the mic out. Uh, out. But I think that the acoustics in here are, are, are great. Yeah. Some of us have been known to be quiet. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. That was very good. Uh, so uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, I want to I thank the uh, Ryan Junction Fire District for allowing us to be here this evening, and uh, to the uh, to those in the Ryan Junction uh, community, um, thank you uh, for all that you have been through here, uh, particularly uh, with the floods, but more importantly, in uh, in I guess I want to say uh, thriving here in, in the junction. I think it's uh, one of the most beautiful parts of our of our township. Um, not just the river, but everything about it out here is just amazing. So I, I want to thank you for uh, for all that you've done over the years, and particularly the families who have, you know, uh, been here one generation after another, uh, and, and been part of this wonderful community. So I, I thank you. So I'd like to call the uh, May 11, 2016, meeting of the Rotterdam Town Board to order. Ms. Uh, Ms. Mark, would you please call the roll? Mr. Christoph. Present. Mr. Lamar. Present. Mrs. Miller Herrera. Present. Mr. Valaki. Present. Mr. Tomaso. Present. Vice President. Don't please rise. And Mr. Colangelo, would you please lead us in the pledge? The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So, um, we, we, we were all here, uh, the board, we were all present at 5.30. We reviewed the agenda for this evening's meeting. Um, and uh, at uh, 6.11 uh, p.m., uh, oh, excuse me, let me, let me mention uh, one more thing. Uh, we, we modified resolution 134.16 two times. Uh, and what I mean by that is we, we, we modified the resolution uh, first with a motion by Councilmember Galano and a second by Councilmember Christou to add language to the resolution itself. Um, after where you see the, the $12 figure, uh, the, the words not to exceed 20 hours per week were inserted. And then in the actual uh, resolution itself, which is what we, we have here, which is our, our basically our, our backup, you don't have that, but what we did under section one uh, with a motion by council member Galano and a second by council member Larmore, we added uh, the words on an as needed basis not to exceed 20 hours per week. So all we did was just, just basically clear up language there. And everyone voted in favor of making the amendment to the resolution uh, there, so 134.16. And then at 6.11 p.m., we had a motion by Councilmember Larmore and a second by Councilmember Bolano with everyone voting affirmative to exit executive or exit, exit the agenda. And we kind of sat here and had some laughs and talked individually. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to just bring to your attention, uh, for those of you who see, uh, we, we made a copy of uh, just a couple of phrases that are coming up uh, in services, but, but there's one missing, so I would like to just mention this publicly. Uh, to, uh, to everyone who, who would be watching the meeting at home. Uh, the 56th Annual Town of Rotterdam Memorial Day Parade uh, will uh, be held on Thursday, May 26th, 2016. The parade is scheduled to start at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the parade begins at the Warrior Path at Mahoneson High School. Uh, folks line up there between like 5.45 and 6 o'clock. And, uh, and march uh, down Curry Road to Rotterdam Town Hall on Sunrise Boulevard. On uh, Monday, May 30, 2016, at 2.30 p.m. at Rotterdam Town Hall, uh, we will have the 56th Annual Rotterdam Memorial Day service. And for those of you who've got a tent, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a nice, solemn service. It's, uh, it's, it's great. So we, hopefully, weather permitting, we'll be outside at the uh, Town Hall Monuments and uh, at, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the 30th. And then one, one addition. Uh, the annual Rotterdam Elks Flag Day Parade is June 13, 2016, so Monday, June 13, 2016. And also, uh, the parade there assembles at 5.30 p.m. Um, and begins uh, the parade down Curry Road at 6 p.m. 
uh, to uh, the Rotterdam Oxbow on Curry Road. So, uh, what does it start? It starts at, uh, uh, at Mahonson High School. Thank you. It starts at Mahonson again. Uh, and, and we go to, uh, to the Oxbow. So at this, at this time, what I'd like to do is ask, um, is Jim, are you going to make the presentation? Yes. For us, great. So Jim, Jim Flangelo is going to uh, give us a, a presentation on the uh, upgrades that are, have been committed uh, to here. And uh, and then it, maybe later, Lori, after when Jim's uh, speaking, if you don't mind coming up as well, I appreciate that. Go ahead, Jim, please. Thank you. Just uh, some brief remarks. So welcome to the fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Brandwell. I'm at 20 River Drive, Park and I'm currently a fire commissioner, a past chief, and still an active member of the volunteer fire team. On behalf of the chief, the president, fire district commissioners, and members of the volunteer fire company, we thank you for the opportunity to briefly discuss some of the background associated with this uh, resolution number 132.16 dealing with our 3,400 square foot uh, proposed addition, which by the way goes on the side of the building if you would uh, familiar with it. <coughs> so the agenda, actually, coincidentally, we couldn't have planned this any better. You rotate your meetings all along, and this particular day, this meeting is here to have this resolution proposed. It's great, and it's just very coincidental. It wasn't some grand scheme by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> The agenda handout describes in detail the need for the addition. But we thought we would take an opportunity to post some of the pictures that you see around here but to remind interested parties of just what transpired here after Hurricane Irene in our area on the early morning hours of August 29, 2011. Shall follow shortly thereafter by traffic storm. Please. Additionally, we posted a 3D image, which is in the back, of the proposed addition to give residents an idea of how the addition was designed to better serve the community in the event of another such disaster or another incident, either uh, at the railroad tracks or commercial incidents. I'm not going to mention this. That's connected international. <coughs> the design includes an Americans with Disabilities Act compliant restrooms, the command and private triage office areas, a multi purpose meeting room, a general storage area, and a generator switch gear trailer area. We're also providing for a complete electrical system upgrade as well as an appropriately designed generator backup system, which we do not have. A little history. The process for obtaining funding for this project started in mid-2013 when Governor Cuomo instituted the New York Rising Community Reconstruction Program to assist communities that were impacted by Irene, Lee, and even thanks uh, Hurricane Superstorm, Sandy, that hit downstate area in October 2012. On the state level, the program continues to be administered by the Governor's Office of Storm Recovery, closer personnel. And the actual funding is being provided by the U.S. Department of Urban Development. On the local level, in late 2013, the town established their own New York Rising Committee. At their direction, our department personnel documented our needs to them, and they championed our various proposals into closer. <coughs> We would not be here tonight if not for the diligent and compassionate involvement of this town community. Committee. And special thanks go to Tom Ewell and Peter Comenzo for helping us on this. In mid-2015, our project was tentatively approved, and the detailed design of the various regulation and environmental approval processes began in earnest. Most of the regulatory compliance studies are listed in the resolution. This brings us to our why we're here tonight. We are going to ask for the town board's approval of this resolution. Uh, there will still be some hurdles to overcome, but without the board's approval, the project cannot proceed. Again, on behalf of the members, thank you for your assistance and consideration. And now, from those, sir, uh, this is uh, Louise Salome. I have very little to add. I think that Jim did a great job of, of coming up where we've been the last couple of years. I did want to just say, though, this project has been designed consistent with um, what was identified as a plan. That's very important because this is a process that started with the rest of the way up. 
Um, so this is something that is obviously very important in the community. Uh, there was one um, exception to what was identified in the plan, and that is something that we could not have known about at the time the plan was developed. When we did our testing on site uh, for environmental and structural issues, we found that um, the soil below the um, parking lot has um, cinders incorporated into it from the uh, railroad operation that previously existed here. And it's necessary to excavate that material and um, take it away. It's not a hazardous material. It just does not provide a good structural basis for the addition. And so that is one element that <coughs> wasn't known at the time and is necessary uh, to complete the project. We're anticipating that it will be within the construction contingency for the project. And um, the funding is in order to move forward. Thank you very much. And I, and, and I want to thank all of you, you know, for particularly those who worked on the, on the project. And Lori, to you and, and uh, the folks that you work with at the state for your attention, uh, not just to you know to, to the, the needs here for the for our community in Rodham Junction, but more importantly for your attentiveness and um, and assistance with town staff uh, has been invaluable to us. So I want to thank you and, and give you. A, a, I wish there was a way I could give you a commendation tonight, but uh, I don't know if we can do that to the state offices. But it might, might, might not look right. But, uh, but you folks have really done a great job for us. And really, I, I thank you very, very much for, for that. You have a great staff, so it's easy thank to you. work with them. Yeah, we've got some folks who have been around for a while in the town and, and, and have good experience. <coughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> OK, at this time, uh, we will entertain a public comment privilege of the floor. Do we have that? Bonnie Hill. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bonnie Hill. I live on 2 the here. And just a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, every time it rains, Box Street floods <coughs> because of the drainage problem. Um, in the past year, my daughter's had three heart attacks, and the fire department had to respond to you know, get her to the hospital. And without, it, there has to be a clear for them to get to her and help her. Um, another thing is, my cellar floods every time it rains because of the drainage problem on the street. Therefore, I have to call the fire department and they come and pump the cellar out and it's just been an ongoing problem for years. And it should be addressed now rather than five years from now. <coughs> um, and then in January, there was a water main break on Water Street. My cellar ended up with five inches of water in, in it. And again, the fire department had to come and pump the cellar out. And I had to keep my sump pump running for weeks because I was told that it was on my side of the pipe that was leaking, which actually ended up being on the town side. <coughs> so the town was responsible to fix it, which they did eventually fix it. But um, I had a stone wall in place in front of my property, which they had to knock down to show that it was their problem. And that's not there anymore. And I would like that replaced somehow or be reimbursed for the cost of that. But the, my main concern is the drainage problem on the street, like I said, which has been going on for years that really should be addressed. And uh, that's about all I have to say. And uh, uh, one other thing, I was affected by Irene also. So when I get water in the cellar, I get a little um, scared, um, antsy, or, you know, brings back that. And also, I had to have my um, furnace serviced because the water that got in my cellar after the water main break 
affected the performance of it. And it had to be so. And, um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Padone, Jr.? Oh, I'm speaking on behalf oh, of okay. He's, he's my son, and he okay. works out of town. No problem. But, um, he also, um, he bought the house next door to me, which also, when the street floods, it goes into his cellar, and he has to call the fire department, once again, to thank God for them, but they have to come and pump his cellar out also. So it just presents a problem that it takes away from other things that we could be doing. It, it, it all comes back to the drainage problem on Lot Street. And if I could, if I could just address that for a moment. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, assembly member, assemblyman Santa Barbara and I met here with uh, Sean Taylor, and we were down on Lot Street. And uh, I, I, I hate to, I, I hate to say it like this, but I, I've been to this movie before, right? You know, where you know how it's going to end. <coughs> and the ending is always the same. Somebody's going to get flooded. And the property, their property is going to get damaged, and we're we're not going to sit idly by while that continues to happen. I want you to know that. Se secondly, what we're doing uh, is that uh, the state actually was in touch with us again. I don't know if it was yesterday or today, because uh, I talked with a couple of folks to, uh, today. The Department of Public Works about this, but we need to have DOT's cooperation, and anything that we do there, no um, longer find us. Because the uh, the storm the storm drainage system that's there is inadequate uh, for the runoff that's coming off of 5S. Uh, in order for us to do a, a the right job and spend uh, spend our time and, and, and the state's money and or our our, our our people's money here in Rotterdam, Rotterdam <coughs> Junction, uh, on this project, uh, we need to have a sound plan in place that will uh, assure us that you know outside of a major a major hurricane event, which none of us can necessarily predict exactly what will happen. But for rainfall that you're having and that we have that's normal, mm -hmm. uh, you should not be getting flooded. Uh, and, and, and it shouldn't be a position where you're, you're getting five, six, eight inches of, of water in your basement. Having said that, for those of you who live along Lock Street, you know that the drainage there it, the, it is not adequate enough. Um, we attempted uh, eight or nine years ago, ten years ago, when I was in office last time, to do more with the pump system that's there and put another line in. I think that helped for a while, uh, but it doesn't help your situation, which is you had a water break in front of your house, and that, that which had nothing to do with rain. Right. Uh, and more importantly, uh, when it comes to the to rain, we should be able to, to fix that. Uh, so know that we are on top of that. We're, uh, we're we're going to address that shortly. I just don't know whether that's going to be you know this month, next month, July. I can't give you the exact time frame. But know that this year we're going to come up with some resolution. And what I'm hoping for is that uh, this year we can at least uh, take care of the drainage and potentially put in what we need for drainage. Our, our issue uh, when it comes to, you know, if you live in the Northeast and, and, the, and the, so the blacktop plants or the asphalt plants are only open for a certain window of time. So we have to work within that window of time. Hopefully you get the asphalt in and we can take care of the road too. But, but I want you to know that we are uh, committed to doing something about that drainage this year. So, um, you know, when I say, I hate to say cross my fingers, but, but we're working with the state, they've contacted us. Uh, so I, I think we'll show everybody this year's plan. And we'll let everyone know along the <coughs> street and the front part of Main Street that, that, that are affected here what we're going to do before we do it. Okay, so we'll, we'll maybe have a meeting here at some point in the near future with a plan. Okay. Thank you. That makes me feel. Yeah, I just want you to work. We're we're, we're, we're on. Hear that here. And, and and frankly, Lori, uh, the governor's office of storm recovery. You know, and again, there's no there's no absolutes, but there may be some ability for them to help us. We just don't know what that is yet, but we're working on it. So Thank you very that, much. that's a priority for us. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming this evening too. Thank you. I'm sorry about your troubles. Thank you, David Rogel. Hello. Uh, Ted Isabella Street. I'm the proud new owner of uh, one of the newer New York Rising homes. And thanks to everybody that uh, worked here and the uh, council. Uh, I got a lot of help with my builder and stuff, and uh, it all went well. Thank you. I used replaced the uh, water main at Ted Isabella Street this spring, and they tore up probably more than 50% width of the road. 
And the foreman was telling me that we're only going to repair the road. I'd like to see if we could have the black top replaced instead of repaired. I know it's a back street. There might not be a lot of traffic, but why do something half-assed? <laughs> and I hope that they're going to schedule that pretty soon. Pretty tough riding up and down the street with half a road. This is going to range a lot of roads and stuff. And, uh, let's get my new house all dusted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll address that. I don't know if we're working for Yeah. Uh, our Harvey Superintendent's here. He's saying we're working mm -hmm. on it. So, you know, we, they're just putting together their list of what roads are yeah. being paid and a plan for that. So, so no, it's, it's being worked on. And that uh, maybe mm -hmm. consider a new road instead of just fixing and patching that one? Well, we're kind of pricing on that right now. Okay, so, so we're, we're going to get pricing data, but we'll do I do realize that, and I'm looking at because the fact is more than 50% dripped up. We may finish ripping the reps up and just doing a final overlay. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, it may happen that way. I can't promise nothing just yet. We're checking the prices on everything. Very good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Dan Carroll. Good morning, Mr. Superintendent, Mr. Supervisor, Town Board members. Uh, Dan Garrow, Q Salino Lane. Uh, I want to start by saying it's great to be out in the junction. Uh, I wanted to uh, say uh, thank you to the uh, Junction Firehouse and the Chief and its membership for hosting us this evening. Uh, good luck with your uh, upgrades going forward. Um, and also, you know, I stopped out here right after the flood, and uh, this is the true American spirit what you see here. Uh, when we're knocked down, we get back up, we brush ourselves off, and we persevere. So I want to give them a big round of applause. Uh, I want to finish the board with a copy of a grant that's been made available by New York State. Uh, this is what's called the State Municipal Facilities Program Grant. Uh, Governor Cuomo uh, has made a uh, very large grant available for capital projects, uh, primarily infrastructure. Uh, so, I know Pete Comenzo slated on the budget this evening to be uh, reappointed as a grant coordinator. Um, so, I look forward to this town in the future hopefully applying for this grant and thus taking advantage of some of this grant funding. Uh, $385 million is available to all of New York State. Um, this could be used for sewer, water, treatment plants. We could partner with neighboring municipalities, tie-in systems for redundancy. Um, so I just want to make that available to you guys. Not sure if you guys are aware of that yet. But it's a very modest amount of money to be made available. Um, so I hope that we can apply for it and our town gets something. Thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That's it. That's it? Okay. Just so everyone knows, we, we uh, we have employed the services of a, uh, of a grant writer. Her name is Sue Lombardi. She has uh, committed to a lot of work, and not just for Rotterdam in the past, but also for the city of Skankley, East Skankley County. She's very, very uh, adept and knows, knows the area very well. She's assisting us with new grants that are coming in. Peter Comenzo, we're, we're moving on a resolution tonight to just reappoint him basically to a grants coordinator position, more so to help us with the existing grants that we already have in place. Uh, so that we can continue to move those those ahead. Uh, Sue, Sue is aware of this, and she, there's also, just so you know, there's some other um, grant opportunities that, that, that fall outside of this. But obviously, we're looking we're looking not just for roadways, uh, but but for a particular <coughs> infrastructure for sewer, and the Hamburg Street in particular, um, you know, potentially uh, for this type of funding. Whether that happens this year or next year is is, is uh, something that we'll we'll, we'll see. But, uh, but um, yeah, there's a lot of money out there. And it, would, it, would be, it would be nice if we, uh, if we could get a lot more of it. Uh, we're going to work hard at it, but we need the, the expertise of people like Sue Lombardi and our town staff and, and the dedication of people like Lori on the state level to help us uh, to, to, uh, to make that become a reality. So thank you for, for bringing that up to us tonight. So let's go into the resolutions. Uh, Ms. Marco, will you read resolution 128? Appoint and reappoint individuals to seasonal positions in the Parks and Recreation Summer Program. 
Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Councilmember Christu. Is there a second, please? I'll second it. Second by Councilmember Larmore. Anyone on a question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, resolution 128 16 passes. Resolution 129 16. Appoint Peter Comenzo, Rotterdam, New York, 12306, the position of grant coordinator for the town of Rotterdam with an annual stipend and an amount not to exceed $1,919.54, beginning May 12, 2016, to December 31st, 2016. Can we have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Christo. Is there a second, please? I'll second that one. Second by Councilmember Larmore. Anyone on a question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Bolano? Yes. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. I guess. The resolution 12916 <coughs> Authorize the supervisor to negotiate and execute a contract with John Savage of Broad Alba, New York, 12025, as Town of Rotterdam Jazz Band Director for the Town's annual the Town's Summer Concert Series at the Rotterdam Senior Citizen Center and the month $750, effective May 11, 2016. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Okay, motion by Councilmember Bolano. Is there a second, please? Second. Okay, second by Councilmember Christo. Anyone on a question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lomore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Bolano? Yes. Mr. Tomazone? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 130.16 passes. Resolution 130.116. Call for public hearing to be held on Wednesday, May 25th, 2016, at 7 p.m. at the John F. Curvin Government Center, Town Hall, 1100 Sunrise Boulevard, Rotterdam, New York, 12306. Upon adoption of a proposed local law of the year 2016 for the following purpose. To amend Chapter 266, Vehicles and Traffic, 266-47, Schedule 7, Yield Intersections, and 266-46, Schedule 6, Stop Intersections of the Code of the Town of Rotterdam, as follows. Repeal all language in Vehicles and Traffic, 266-47, Schedule 7, Yield Intersections, requiring a yield sign on Melrose Street and at the intersection of Ford Avenue. Amend Vehicles and Traffic, 266-46, Schedule Six stop intersections to include the installation of a stop sign in both directions of traffic on Ford Avenue at the intersection, Melrose Street intersection, and a stop sign on Melrose Street at the intersection of Ford Avenue. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Bolano. Is there a second, please? I'll second it. Okay, second by Councilmember Larmo. Anyone have <coughs> a question? Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 13116 passes. Resolution 13216. Resolution to adopt a request by Rotterdam Junction Fire <coughs> Department, District 1, to allow for the construction of a 3,390 square foot addition and upgrades to the existing firehouse on a plus or minus 1.60 acre parcel on property located in the aquifer area overlay district. This, project, this property tax map number 20.5-3-5.11 is located at 1215 Main Street in Rotterdam Junction, New York, 12150. Public hearing was called for at the town board meeting of March 9, 2016. Public hearing was held at the town board meeting of March 23, 2016. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Christou. May I have a second, please? I'll second it. Okay, a second by Councilmember Larmore. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Bolano? Yes. Mr. Tomaso? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 132.16 passes. Resolution 133.16. <coughs> Authorize the supervisor to accept the Schenectady County 2016-2017 County Initiative Program CIP grant and the amount of $1,500 for the Summer Concert Series held at the Rotterdam Senior Citizen Center at 2639 Hamburg Street, Connecticut, New York, 12303. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Christie. <coughs> second, please. I'll second. Mr. Larmore, second by Mr. Larmore. Anyone on a question? I just on a question. We we have applied for this uh, for this for this grant, and, we, uh, and so we received some reimbursement. If you want some additional money that we can hopefully use towards uh, some other some other bands uh, in our uh, summer concert series. So we have motion by Councilmember Christo, second by Councilmember Larmore. Please call the roll, Ms. Larkin. Mr. Christo. Yes. Mr. Lamore. Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera. Yes. Mr. Villano. Yes. Mr. Tomaso. Yes. Five yes. The resolution 13316 passes. Resolution 13416. <coughs> Authorize the supervisor to negotiate and execute a contract with Amy Nerney 
of Schenectady, New York, 12306, as a part-time cook at the Brass Reel Cafe, located in Rogers Senior Citizen Center, on an as-needed basis, with no compensatory time and no employee benefits, at an hourly rate of $12 per hour for the year 2016, not to exceed 20 hours per week. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Okay, motion by Council Member Christo. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Council Member Miller Herrera. Anyone in the question? <clears throat> okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Five yes. Okay, Resolution 134.16 passes. Resolution 135.16? Authorize the supervisor to execute all necessary agreements or other instruments on behalf of the town of Rotterdam in connection with the advancement or funding of the betterment project pursuant to Highway Law 1027. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. move. I'll second. Okay, thank you. We have a motion by Council Member Christo and a second by Council Member <coughs> Milano. Anyone on the question? On the question, just briefly, what this resolution is for is a language that the state of New York has asked us to um, put in a resolution form uh, for the project known as the Hamburg Street, uh, basically redevelopment and sewer project that, that we're working on. Uh, so that's what, what this resolution is for, allowing uh, us to um, move that project ahead. So. Uh, Please call the roll, Ms. Marco. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomas Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 135.16 passes. Resolution 136.16. Authorize the supervisor to execute an out of district water agreement with Thomas and Patricia Carmen of 1129 Rivers Church Road, New York, 12306. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Motion by Council Member Larmore. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Second by Council Member Volano. Anyone other questions? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Rivera? <coughs> yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 136.16 passes. Resolution 137.16? Accept Tom Coach report for the month of April 2016. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Miller Herrera. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Councilmember Christo. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 137 16 passes. Resolution 138 16. Authorized budget transfers by the town controller to various accounts for 2016. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Councilmember Chris Dew. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Councilmember Larmore. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 138.16 passes. That was, uh, like, uh, that was uh, incredible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyone have committee reports this evening? Or um, miscellaneous? Sure. Um, under miscellaneous, I just, um, uh, again, I want to thank the Rotterdam Junction for hosting us. Um, we were up here earlier in the year in this room uh, discussing the Rotterdam Neighborhood Watch and what a good job these, this organization that kind of started in, in Rotterdam Junction did. And, you know, I think it's worthy repeating that Rotterdam Junction truly does represent the ultimate definition of community. Uh, that was proven with how they came together for each other and really, you know, picked themselves up, dusted them, themselves off and made, made sure that no resident was left behind um, after the flooding of Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. Uh, it is the commitment of this board to be as inclusive with the junction as possible. Uh, the supervisor has appointed a one junction resident on our comprehensive plan, plan committee which if you don't know what the Comprehensive Plan Committee is, we are trying after so many years to look at the town as a whole and kind of look at a layout for our, our town for the next 20 years or so. Um, I'd like to just let everyone know that we do have an opening on our Ethics Board Committee. And if anybody in the junction, it would be nice to have some more active participation from the residents of the junction, someone who's not political, and non-controversial as far as politics are concerned, 
that um, would be interested in the job, please notify the supervisor's office and uh, we can just, again, make sure that, that, that the, these committees that exist in our town are also represented by a very important part of our community, which is Rotterdam Junction. Um, I can reiterate the fact that Lock Street has been a topic of discussion in the town. Supervisor has discussed it with me. He mentioned his, uh, his meeting with the Assemblyman Santa Barbara. And I, I think it's, it's fair to say that we're not looking for a treatment here, we're looking for a cure. And it might take a little longer than we would like, but I think nobody wants any more Band-Aids and patchwork. I think that if we work with the Office of Storm Recovery and with the needs of the residents, um, and it's always good to document that stuff in an email to the town board. So, you know, we have it in documentation and we make sure that, again, we find cures for these ills, not treatments. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad the highway superintendent is here to address uh, is, is, Isabella Street. And again, your needs are important, your wants are important, and uh, we, we're here to listen as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion to adjourn. I didn't ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to have a motion to adjourn. I I'm going to stay for a while, so if anyone <clears throat> wants to speak to me, you know, personally, please, please do. I'll stay as long as uh, Jim and, and, and the rest of you, Sean, will let me stay here. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Let's have a, we have a motion. Sorry, we have a motion by Councilmember Christou for an adjournment, seconded by Councilmember Miller Herrera. Please uh, call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Galat? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for coming this evening.